Uh, sim object is uh, an object in Jam 5 that uh, represents a component in the simulated system. So uh, when we've been not very consistent with our terminology thus far. Uh, it's just on these, in some slides, they are, they're like just referred to as the models. But in this, we've referred to it as the sim object. But they are uh, components in Gem 5 that uh, are instantiated from uh, the sim object classes. And they are used to encapsulate parameters and uh, methods about that sim object, which are then used uh, in the Gem 5 simulator to simulate the system. So as an example, we, you will you would have you could have the uh, cache sim object and it has cache objects and the cache sim object might have a parameter like size and this is uh, you define your simulated system in this way we'll go over some examples here because that was quite a lot uh, as each of these shares uh, as each of these shares a common base class gem 5 can handle them in a consistent manner despite sim the, despite simulated a wide variety of components every single component in your system uh, is of type sim object. Uh, sim object is uh, all sim objects have a common base class. The uh, sim object class. Uh, if and if a new component is needed, it will inherit in some manner from the sim object class. Um, uh, the, sim, the sim object class is an abstract base class, so everything is all all. Everything in Gen 5 is of a member class that is a subclass of type sim object. As the last thing here, down here, Gen 5 has special parameters called ports, which are used to define communication between sim objects. More on this in future, but for now, you can just keep in mind that uh, I don't know really why I specifically put that there, more so that uh, uh, Sim object contains parameters, but also contain uh, and functions, but also contains a special thing called ports, which is how sim objects can uh, talk to one another. So it's be a good definition. Okay, uh, it's useful to take Gen five. Uh, it's useful in Gen five to take a sim object and extend it to add new functionality. Gen five should ideally be, be open for extension, but close for close for modification. Um, so, open for extension but closer modification is a uh, this is kind of a design myth, a design philosophy, in uh, optator into design. It essentially, means if you want to like, add something to the system, you don't just you don't really modify a class. You create a new class which inherits from that class and make the changes you want to do. So, let's say, I think I do this example coming up, but for instance, you have. Uh, of type class, and you say, "Hey, I want to have a new. Hey, in my in my experiments, I want to have uh, a new class called my called my cache. Well, you wouldn't modify cache. You would just uh, create a new class and inherit some cache called my cache, and just work from there. So, if you think about the code, you don't have modified any code. You just added to it, and that's the sort of philosophy you should get yourself." Into thinking, if you make changes changes to Jam Five, uh, don't just modify what's there. Create something new that just extends what's already there. Uh, so here's a kind of um, you can go through this in your own time, but it is a uh, uh, an example of what I just talked about. I didn't realize it was also a cache example, but this one you're creating. Your own L. You're creating, first of all, a new abstract base class called L1 cache. Uh, so it's of type that of type cache. I don't know why that, that's kind of redundant. I, I don't know why I'm doing type cache here. I think that's completely redundant. But anyway, and then type abstract base class. So we're creating an L1. We're creating a class L1 cache. Uh, inherit this. I haven't talked about this before, but you can inherit from multiple things. You can be inherited from, in this case, cache, but also object base class. It means it contains the properties of both its parental classes. I don't like to use this very much because it can get very complicated. Uh, and if you have an instance where the two parent classes contain, this, contain the same function, you can get an error. But it should be noted this 
can't, is it, this is possible and allowed. Um, and there's the constructor. And in this example here, the constructor overrides the values of the base class, in this case, cache. And you know, so in this case, you've got the associativity, the tag latency, the data latency, the response latency, the MSRH, the title, but go on and on. Any, any member of the, uh, of the base class can be overridden in the uh, derived class. So here we just defined what it means to be an L1 cache. Uh, and you can, uh, in this example, we can extend the functionality. In this case, we can add a method aiding in the, aiding in how the cache connects, connects the bus to the processor. Uh, and connecting the CPU is left un, 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 unimplemented. So we say, hey, you can connect to this. Hey, we'll define how we're connected to the bus. Say, uh, we'll go over the syntax a bit more in thing, but this is actually saying uh, connect port mem side to the port CPU side ports of the symbol check bus. Um, and connect CPU isn't, Im isn't implemented, but it doesn't really matter because L1 cache is abstract based class anyway. Then when you go, so what this L1i cache here is a subclass of L1 cache. And it has a constructor here. And we do our normal thing where we call the constructor of the superclass. And then finally, to actually have this valid, we uh, implement the needed L1 i cache to connect to the CPU. Uh, I really felt like uh, I talked a lot then. Does anyone have? Any kind of questions or about how this sort of works? How you use object? This was an example of inheriting from a Gen 5 sim object that already exists to get something that you want. And in our example, we had this like intermediate step, the L1 iCache in the middle to kind of define its API. Um, I want to go over this is yeah, something Gen 5 is a bit different to regular Python. I want to go over these cases because they're kind of gotchas. And I just, people can easily run into errors and under, not really understand it, just, even if they are like Python experts, these things are different in Gen 5. Um, Gen 5 has a special module, the special import, M5. Uh, and the only thing you notice in many environments is uh, your IntelliSense doesn't really understand where this is because it's looking for it inside the Python standard library but it's not there, it's inside Gen5. So it's compiled into the Gen5 binary, and therefore when Gen5 interprets it, interprets your script, it imports all that stuff for you. So um, I just think the thing to keep in mind that I get asked every so often is, hey, my like um, code spaces is underlining the M5 library, it says it's not there, doesn't matter. Gen, when you run Gen5 binary, we run the Gen5 binary on your configuration script, it will import it, it's there, it is valid. Uh, it's just unique to Gen5 and not a Python thing. M5 is for all the glue that connects your configuration script to the actual simulator basically exists. Um, sim object parameter assignments are special. So in that top left there, the, that's Python that is normally, that is allowed. You know, you can create a class example, have it two properties, hello and bye, and then you can instantiate that example and add a new property, whatever, and that will print out that statement there, which would be uh, six, uh, five, six. Completely valid Python. But if you try to do similar in Gem 5, let's say that, that in that uh, example is uh, said a sim object, and you try to do it, you'll get uh, attribute error, example has no attribute, whatever. Um, so this kind of, in traditional Python, you can just kind of add uh, variables to objects on the fly when they're instantiated. They can hold the information. Pa sim object doesn't allow this. 
you could only allow parameter assignment in three cases. First, the parameter exists in the list of parameters. In this case, that would be like hello or bye. It already exists. It's already declared. We've already specified it. So you do example to hello and set that. The second condition is you're setting a sim object as a variable. So you can't add a string called uh, at like whatever dot whatever equals int or string or anything else. But if, if it's of type sim object, it's allowed. So you could do example dot whatever and then some sim object, let's say L1 iCache, and you'd be allowed to do that. It's that it's weird, it's I don't like this, but that you're allowed to do that. And the third case is if your parameter name starts the underscore, it's allowed. Uh, so this is kind of because the if you ever you, you do in C++ you have these override operators for let's say assignment. This is what Gen5 does behind the scenes for sim objects. It basically looks for instances where you're assigning things to sim objects and parses things through this way of Gen5 doing stuff. Uh, and it will just throw out this error and people will get very confused because you can do it in other parts of Python. You just can't do it in sim objects. Apart from these three cases. Port assignments are very special. So we haven't went over ports yet, but ports are, ports would be a great example for what we were coming up earlier. My R. Port, <laughs> Gen5 sim objects have a list of ports, and ports are essentially, uh, I, in my head I always think of them as being wires between components, but they're just how, there's just channels in which component, uh, which they are, uh, they, they are uh, how you specify how sim objects connect to one another, um, and how, specify how sim objects communicate with one another. And uh, so you can do, I think, sim object.ports returns a list of ports, and from there you can infer which component, which other sim objects that sim object can talk to. Uh, but they have a special assignment, so if you say sim object one dot, dot whatever, like x equals sim object dot y, that isn't actually assigning x to y, it's saying port x is connected to port y. Um, so that's how you can do it. You specify your ports on different sim objects, and then you do assignment to say this is how they connect together. Uh, so you'll have to have like CPU dot, uh, instruction cache dot uh, request port equals memory dot response port, and you're saying connect that uh, request port, but that I caches response port to the memory system's request port to make that connection, allow them to talk to one another. It's just look, it just looks like, an, like a traditional assignment, but it's not. They actually call this function behind the scenes called connect to the port. Same object vector parameters are immutable. I went over this a bit at the beginning. Like a same object, and it has a parameter called vector param. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, the second one is okay, but you're just overriding. You're not actually muting. You're just like literally wiping it and starting again. Yeah, and the other two is and the other two are not are 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 not permitted. You're not allowed to append, and you're not allowed to remove. It's just there, uh, so you have to use these uh, comprehend. Let's uh, use list comprehensions if you want to like. Uh, and yeah, I think I went over this earlier today. But the following is a common mistake. Someone say, "Oh, I want to make create four CPUs." So I do processor sim object or CPUs to append CPU. No, but you have to just do the bottom what the bottom is here. Uh, I can't remember the exact error you get with this, but it can just cause problems one way or the other. So just keep that in mind. Try to get in the habit of writing your uh, list, uh, d declaring lists like this. Um, uh, these things are equivalent, but the, la the second one actually works. Um, this will become more, more obvious when you start to build simulations, but and we do in, we use a standard library, which we're gonna talk about next. This is kind of more done behind the scenes. But you get to a point in your configuration script where you basically say, I'm done. I'm done setting up the system, instantiate it. 
And that kind of puts a freeze on a lot of uh, changes you can make to a system. You can't just uh, arbitrarily make, you can't really make changes anymore. There's, li there's limitations there. So once you instantiate, you can no longer add new variables to a sim object or things like that. Um, I actually am kind of unclear when you can and can't change things, but I just say generally, just make sure everything is done before instantiation is a good policy generally. Uh, again, the example I'm going to do this instantiate, this M5 instantiate function is actually called within uh, simulate.run, so you might not always see it, uh, but yes, have everything done before you press that button. Um, so in summary, uh, Python is a powerful and flexible language. It's used in Gen 5 to configure and run simulations. There's a number of built-in data types and collections. It's object-oriented language, which is what I really want to get across in this thing. And Gen 5 uses object-oriented design to model components of a computer system. Uh, but Gen 5 uses this in a special way. Uh, so also keep that in mind. It's 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 kind of these things like it's like 99% pretty much traditional Python with one or two things slightly different. So it's easy to kind of forget. Uh, and yeah, that's why I kind of go over these. Um, so I'm about to move on to a slightly different topic, but we will use object-oriented design in the next uh, session to kind of build what we want to build. 